Hey guys, it is great to be able to dive into God's Word together again tonight. Um, I hope that you're doing well, and I hope that you are ready to look into the book of Luke again. Uh, So last week we started a new series called Pictures of Jesus, and we talked about who Jesus was proclaimed to be at his birth. We saw that picture of um, shepherds on a hillside and the angels coming and telling them that he was the Savior of the whole world and that they should not be afraid and they should have peace because Christ the Lord had been born. And tonight we're going to look back into the book of Luke in chapter 5. So again, who is Jesus? Who does the Bible say that he is? Why did he come to this earth? Well, one of the major reasons that Jesus came to this earth is because God desires relationship with you and with me. And Jesus is a center of God's plan. Relationship with God happens when we hear the call of God to follow Jesus and believe in him. The Bible makes some pretty bold statements about who Jesus is and what he came to do. And if we honestly uh, take a look at the Bible, we'll come face to face with a decision. A guy named C.S. Lewis was a very famous man for a lot of different reasons. One maybe that you know him for is uh, he wrote the the book series, The Chronicles of Narnia. C.S. Lewis was a brilliant man and a Christian. He came up with something called the Lewis Trilemma. And here's how it goes. He said that Jesus is either a liar, a lunatic, or he is Lord. Either Jesus was not God and said he was and simply lied, or Jesus actually believed he was God and said that he was, but he wasn't. He was just crazy. He was just a lunatic. Or Jesus really was God. Jesus is Lord. So either he is a liar, he's a lunatic, or he really is who he says he is. In this sermon series, we're confronted with uh, some pretty bold statements about Jesus. Last week we saw angels proclaiming that Jesus had been born. He was Christ the Lord and that he was a savior of the whole world. That's a pretty bold statement and tonight we're going to see another very bold statement. And at some point you and I all have to make a decision about what we're going to do with Jesus. Either these statements about Jesus are false and the Bible and Jesus are lying or the biblical writers in Jesus were crazy, or Jesus really is Lord of all. So we have to make that decision. No one else can make it for you. You have to make it for yourself. But let's look at Scripture to see an accurate picture of who Jesus is, who, what he did, and what the Bible has to say about him. It's pretty amazing how God created us. He put certain desires inside each one of us. And specifically, the, it's the desire for relationship that amazes me. You know, there isn't one, plant, one person on the planet who doesn't desire relationship. It's ingrained within us. So some people may say that they uh, are trying to get away from others. Maybe they become a loner. But the reality is, the truth is, that people aren't loners because they don't desire relationship The truth is that people become loners because they have experienced broken relationships or they have mistrust for some reason. In our heart of hearts, though, all of us desire relationship because it's the way that we were made. It's the way that God created us. We were made in His image, and He desires relationship. Now, I'm not huge on movies, but the ones that I love the most always have a storyline that includes love. Now, I'm not talking about mushy, sappy kind of love stories. I'm talking about the kind of love stories where the superhero comes in and destroys a whole squadron of villains in order to save the girl that he loves. Things have to blow up in order to be a a good movie. But the relationship angle is always there in a good movie. Whether it's a love relationship or a deep friendship or a family relationship, good movies are all about relationships, and so is life. Life is all about relationships. Why do we love stories like that? Well, it's because God created us to desire relationship. That's part of who God is. He is the triune God, Father, Son, and Spirit. And He has existed in that triune Godhead. He has existed in perfect relationship 
with the Father, Son, and Spirit for all eternity. And when God created us, He created us in His image, and God desires relationship. And it's amazing. God des desires relationship so much so that He sent His own Son to this earth so that He could have a relationship with you and with me. So let's dive into Scripture together. Turn to the book of Luke in chapter 5. Uh, we were in chapter 2 last week. Chapter 5 is almost 30 years have passed since then. And Jesus is no longer a baby. Jesus has become a very influential teacher. He's caught people's interest. So in chapter 5, a crowd has gathered around Jesus. They're all pushing in to get close to him. They want to hear him, see him. They want to experience who Jesus is and what he's all about. So Jesus, knowing that this crowd is pressing in on him, gets into Simon Peter's boat in order to teach the people. Now, Jesus had not called his 12 disciples at this point in time. He had uh, not, not called them. They were probably very familiar with him. He was in their area. They had been exposed to him, but they had not left everything to follow him yet. In, in reality, he had not even asked them to follow him yet. So obviously, it was no accident that Jesus got into Simon Peter's boat in order to teach this crowd. I want you to look in Luke chapter 5 and verse 1. It says this, One day, as Jesus was standing by the lake of Gennesaret, the people, who were, the people were crowding around him and listening to the word of God. He saw at the water's edge two boats left there by the fishermen who were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little, a little from shore. Then he sat down and taught the people from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into deep water and let down your nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything, but because you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them, and they came and filled both boats so full that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' knees and said, Go away from me, Lord. I am a sinful man. For he and all his companions were astonished at the catch of fish that they had taken. And so were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, Simon's partners. Then Jesus said to Simon, Don't be afraid. From now on you will fish for people. So they pulled their boats up on shore, and they left everything and followed him. This story is really an unbelievably amazing scene. There are so many things that we can pull from it, but I want, what I want you to focus on is Jesus' desire for relationship. And first of all, I want you to see this. Jesus pursues relationship. It seemed like in this story that Jesus just randomly picked Simon Peter's boat to get into because he needed a place to teach from. But as the story unfolds, it actually turns out that Jesus was being very intentional about the boat that he chose. It seemed like at the, at the moment that his choice was very random. Yeah, but we know from the rest of the Bible that Simon Peter becomes one of the main figures in the whole storyline. Jesus really used Simon Peter in some amazing ways. So obviously in this story, Jesus is being very intentional to get into Simon Peter's boat. So when Jesus finishes teaching, he looks at Simon Peter and he says to him, let, go out into deeper water and let down your nets for a catch. Well, why did he say that? Was this just about catching fish or did Jesus have a bigger plan? Well, Jesus was pursuing Simon Peter and his partners, James and John. He wanted to show them a lesson, but he wanted them to know who he was. Jesus was pursuing relationship. God's plans oftentimes seem haphazard. But the truth is that he does everything intentionally. He does everything he does has an intentional purpose to it. So what picture do we see here? Well, we see God in the flesh pursuing these guys. Now just stop and think about that. God came down to earth, took on flesh, and began to pursue relationships with people just like you and just like me. God intentionally and specifically climbed into Simon Peter's boat 
so that he could show himself to them, so that he could call them into relationship with him. He went after them. That's the God that, that sent his son for us. He's coming after people, just like you and just like me. He went after these guys. Now take a moment and consider what's happening in these verses. The God of the whole universe, the one whom the angels proclaimed to the shepherds in Luke chapter 2, that God intentionally and specifically climbed into a specific man's boat so that he could call that man to follow him. Do you realize how incredible that is? And what's even more incredible is that the very same God, the one who spoke all things into existence and has all power, is calling people to himself even today. He actually wants us to know him. He's not indifferent to us. He's not distant from us. He's not separate from us. God is a God who pursues us and a God who intentionally places himself in our path so that we might see him and hear him. So where is God placing himself in your path? How is he intentionally calling you to himself? How is he inten intentionally coming after you? Do you see him working and moving in your life? He is actively pursuing you, whether you realize it or not, so that your path would intersect his path and you would understand how much he loves you. So do you see him? Well, it's a good thing that Peter saw him. Here's the second thing we see Jesus doing in this story. Jesus reveals himself. What happens next is incredible. When these guys cast their nets, ex nets exactly where Jesus told them to, their nets began to overflow. So much so that their nets began to break and their boats began to be swamped. This was absolutely a miracle. But even more amazing than this miracle is the statement that Jesus was making to these guys. When Simon Peter listened to Jesus and obeyed him, Jesus revealed his true self. To Simon Peter. So Jesus intentionally gets into Simon Peter's boat, and as Simon Peter trusts Jesus enough to do what Jesus says, Jesus showed Simon Peter who he really was. That's the way it works. As we put our faith in Jesus, he reveals the truth to us. He reveals himself to us. And then we see Simon Peter, so I love this picture, we see Simon Peter realize who Jesus is and he falls to his knees and he calls Jesus Lord. Immediately he knows that this is the God of the, the whole creation. He falls to his knees in fear, the Bible says, and he calls him Lord. And strangely, he asks Jesus to go away from him. Well, why did he do that? Well, as soon as he realized who Jesus was, he also re remembered and realized that he himself was a sinner. He knew that Jesus could control the fish in this, this lake of, of a Sea of Galilee. He knew that Jesus could do that, and only one person can do that. Jesus must be God. God has no sin, and woe is me, I have sin. And so I'm separated from God. Jesus, go away from me. I'm not worthy to be in your presence. So I want you to think about your own life. This is the way the gospel works. At the same moment that faith is birthed in us and we exercise that faith, Jesus reveals himself to us. And we begin to see who he is and we begin to understand who we are in light of who he is. Think about it. In your life, Jesus wants to reveal himself to you. He wants to show you his character. And he wants you to see your sin in light of who he is. Because when we understand who he is, and we understand who we are in light of who he is, what he, ha what he has done to restore the relationship becomes clear. And then and only then can we truly know him. So here's what happens. He pursues us, and then he reveals himself to us. Some way through the circumstances of our life, whether it's a Sunday school teacher coming into your life, or it's a friend who knows Jesus, or it's a parent who's taught you about Christ, God is intersecting our lives in so many different ways. He's working out the plans of our life so that His path would cross ours. We would see Him, understand that He is God, that He has sent His Son, Jesus, to die for our sins, understand that we have sinned, and then call us to faith in him. 
He pursues us and he reveals himself to us. And I love this part. This is the best part of the story. Jesus renews us. As Simon Peter knelt in fear in front of Jesus, the words that we see time and time again from the book of Luke came out of Jesus' mouth. He said, do not be afraid. Without dismissing Simon Peter's sin, Jesus reassures him that he is not in danger. Why did he do that? Was it because Jesus didn't care about his sin? Was it Jesus was just going to look over his sin? Well, that wasn't it. The reality is Jesus knew that the reason he came to this earth was to pay for Simon Peter's sin. And so, rightfully, Simon Peter's afraid in the presence of God because he has sin. But Jesus says, look, I'm coming to, I'm the Savior of the world. I'm coming to forgive you of your sin. And so don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. I've got a plan for you. I love what he says. Jesus had come to save him and call him to be a fisher of men. With these simple words, Simon Peter's life as a simple fisherman in Galilee was totally transformed. He was made new. His life's purpose was renewed. You see, God's plan for Peter's life came into action, came into clear focus at this point. Jesus is pursuing us, and he calls us to faith. He reveals himself to us, but that's only the beginning. Think about what we see in verse 11 with these three guys, Simon Peter and James and John. We see them leaving everything to follow Jesus. Their lives are totally renewed and brought back into line with the life of God. Their lives were made to count. And I don't know about you, but I know within my heart, I want my life to count. Well, I've found the only thing in this life that gives me any kind of purpose is Jesus. He makes things new. He creates a new heart inside of us, and He gives us new aspirations and new desires. And He gives us the power to to make an eternal impact in people's lives. God gives us a new purpose when we come into relationship with Jesus. So who is Jesus? Well, he's the one who calls us. He's the one who makes us new. He's the one who brings purpose to our life. He's the one who intentionally pursues us, reveals himself to us, and then changes our lives completely. I wonder how Jesus is calling you. Maybe you've never actually seen the ways that God is working in your life. Maybe, maybe you wonder if he even exists. But may, make no mistake He is pursuing you. Whether you realize it or not, He desires relationship with you. He wants a relationship with you. He wants to to show you and help you know His love and forgiveness and His goodness in your life. So what do you do if you don't know Him? If you've never stepped into that relationship? Well, just like Peter, you have to realize your sinfulness. In light of who Jesus is, you have to realize that that you're not holy. You're not sinless. You have to realize just like Simon Peter did and, and then literally leave everything to follow Jesus. Because of your faith in Him, you leave your sin and your old way of living because you believe in Jesus. If that's you, if you're saying, I believe Jesus really is Lord. I believe that with all my heart then that will cause you to say, okay, I turn my life away from my selfishness, away from my sinfulness, and I follow Jesus. He calls us to completely follow him. Confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, Romans 10, 9 and 10 says, and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead and you will be saved. So if that's you tonight, if you need to know Jesus, if you need to give your life to him for the very first time, it's not hard. God is not playing games with us. He wants to make it very simple. And the truth is, Romans 10, 9 and 10 says that that we have to confess that Jesus is Lord. And that's more than words. That means that that we, we say to him, God, you're my Lord. Jesus, you are the Lord of everything in my life. I place my life under your control. And we have to believe in our hearts that God has raised him from the dead. And then maybe some of you, maybe most of you already know it. Don't think that he's not calling you to. He is calling you to be a fisher of men. 
You know, Jesus doesn't save us to then just let us do whatever we want to do in this life. He saves us to set us on a new path. He's calling you and he's calling me to be fishers of men. Maybe what he's calling you to do tonight is just to remember the purpose that he has for you. Maybe you need to renew your commitment to that purpose. I encourage you, before your head hits the pillow tonight, to spend some time in prayer tonight and plead for God's help in that. Let's pray together. God, we thank you that we have a refuge in you. Thank you that you want us to know you. God, it is unbelievable that you would allow us to know you, first of all, but that you would pursue us even more so. God, I pray that those truths would not escape us, but they would ingrain in our hearts a love for you because you have loved us first. And God, just as much as that, you love other people in our lives. And I pray that you would help us to truly understand the call to be a fisher of men. Whatever we find ourselves doing, God, that is the primary purpose of our lives, is to bring you glory by sharing you with other people. God, help us to understand your word rightly. Please help us by the power of your spirit to obey your word, God. Thank you for your goodness to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want to invite you to one more thing. In just a few moments at 7 p.m., just a few minutes from now, we're going to meet on Zoom. Here are the instructions for that.